Today we're going to be discussing the biochemical testing used to differentiate members of the gram-negative rod Enterobacteraceae family. In front of me, I have Escherichia coli, which is also known as E. coli. I have the tubes that I had inoculated previously. I have the TSI slant, the citrate slant, the urease broth, and the MIO tube. So how do we interpret them? Well, this is the original slant, a TSI slant. It has three sugars in it, which we're looking to see if the organism actually ferments those sugars. So in the butt of the tube, we have glucose, and in the slant, we have lactose and sucrose. An acidic environment will produce a yellow color, and that means that there was fermentation. A red color would uh, indicate an alkaline environment, which indicates no fermentation of that sugar. So if you look at the difference between these two slants, you can say that this uh, Escherichia coli is A over A, acid over acid, and it also does produce gas if you see this big bubble right here. Sometimes you'll also see that there will be a separation of the media from the bottom of the tube that also indicates gas production. There is no blackening of the media at all in the slant, so that means that there is no H2S production, uh, which is done in the presence of iron, so it would be this blackening, uh, which I will show you later. Moving on to the citrate slant, we have the original citrate slant here. It's green, and this one has stayed green, so that indicates a negative result. A negative citrate result indicates that the organism, E. coli, does not utilize citrate as the sole source of nitrogen and carbon uh, in order for it to grow on the media. So there is uh, no alkaline reaction and it keeps the auger neutral, which keeps it green. The next, <coughs> excuse me, the next uh, tube that we're looking at is the urease broth and this looks exactly the same as the previous one. There is no color change uh, which indicates that this is a negative reaction. So this uh, organism, E. coli, does not produce urease. If urease was produced by E. coli um, or the urea in the media was actually used, what would happen is there would be an alkaline environment that was formed due to ammonia, that's the byproduct of the utilization of urea. And then the phenol red indicator in the tube would um, change to a red color. And we will see that production with Proteus and Morganella morgani. Moving to the next tube, we have the MIO tube. Now the MIO tube starts out as this purple, um, clear, semi-solid uh, media. And remember we stabbed it with the needle and we're looking for three things in this tube. First of all, we're looking for the stab line and I don't think I can really show you that very well with the uh, camera here because if if there is a cloudiness of the auger and there's growth away from the stab line, uh, it means a couple of things. Growth away from the stab line in the auger indicates that the organism is motile. So hence the M of MIO, it stands for motility. The other uh, part of that would be the I. Uh, we haven't gotten to that yet because I have to add a reagent for that. Uh, I is for indole. And uh, I will be demonstrating the indole production in a second. You have to add four drops of the COVAX reagent to the top of this tube and uh, jiggle it about a little bit so that you get the um, indole production in, that was in the media uh, to go out into the broth not the broth, I'm sorry, the reagent that rests on top. And what we would be looking for is a red or pink 
change of color in the COVAX reagent to indicate a positive result. With the ornithine, the ornithine uh, is in the media and it's, it's an amino acid that is utilized by the bacteria if the organism uh, growth causes a cloudy grayish purple color. If it was yellow, that would indicate that there is no deamination of the ornithine amino acid. Let's move on to the, I'm sorry, also look, you can see there's also gas production in here, which was demonstrated also in the TSI slant that we saw earlier. So to recap with the MIO tube, because I think I butchered that just a tiny bit, uh, <laughs> it is cloudy um, and you cannot see the stab line. So there's growth away from the stab line, which means that Escherichia coli is modal. It produced gas. There is There are bubbles in there, although MIO is not meant to detect if the organism produces gas. Uh, ornithine was... Uh, decarboxylized because there is a bluish gray color that is not clear through like this you can see all the way through the original tube you can't see all the way through that so a cloudy purplish gray indicates a positive result which is the dark decarboxylization of the amino acid ornithine now I'm going to add my COVAX reagent so I swirl swirl the COVAX reagent. I'm going to pull up, pull up the fluid into the dropper and I'm going to add three to four drops into the MIO tube. And now what we're going to do is flick it. You can kind of already see the pink forming up top. See the pink? up here, that means that the organism E. coli does deaminate the um, amino acid tryptophan, which would be provided in the auger itself. That's why we have to flick it, because if we did not flick it, the indole that's present from the growth in the tube is not going to be liberated into the uh, reagent that gets dropped in on top. Okay. A good way to check to see if your TSI slant makes sense is to look at the organism on a McConkeyauger plate. Why does that make sense? Well, McConkeyauger plate uh, differentiates between lactose fermenters and non lactose fermenters of the uh, GNRs that we're testing, so the Enterobacteriaceae group, which, you know, it, it would also grow other gram negatives. Uh, we're testing the GNRs, though, from the Enterobacteriaceae family. So this matches. We have A over A, which means that it does ferment lactose um, up at the slant, and it was pink on the McConkie auger, so that indicates that it does ferment lactose. So that's a good check that you should be performing anytime you do this testing to make sure that what you see in your results makes sense.